Hi, and thanks for buying Earth Navigator. To start with, I'm going to ask you to close After Effects, if it's currently open, and install the script. If you're working on Windows, you need to copy the entire folder, Earth Navigator Script, into Programs, Adobe, Adobe After Effects, Support Files, Scripts. If you're working on Mac, you have to copy the Earth Navigator folder into Applications, Adobe After Effects, Scripts folder. It is very important to copy the entire folder and not just the JSX bin file. Now you can start After Effects. If you now try and go directly to File, Scripts, you'll see that the Earth Navigator has correctly been added in the Scripts list but if you click on it, you'll receive an error message that informs you that this script cannot start. In fact, the Earth Navigator script can only work in combination with the right project, that is to say, Earth Navigator. The right path to use the script is, after starting After Effects, to open the Earth Navigator project and then start the script. At this point, you can begin to customize the look of the Earth. Let me show you the available options. Open the Earth Appearance Composition, then select the Control Panel layer. You can start to change some parameters from the Effect Controls panel of this layer. The first slider allows you to change the opacity of the clouds. The Atmosphere Amount slider changes the intensity of the atmosphere around the globe. Using Light Direction, you can choose the position of sunlight around the Earth. In the night area, only city lights will be visible. With Light Height, you can set the height of sunlight. If you, for example, set this value to 100, the sun will be exactly in front of the world. Unchecking the Enable Night Area checkbox, there's no night area and all visible parts of the Earth are enlightened. You can also choose another background instead of the universe, like a solid tint. Click on the Solid Background checkbox and set the background color. Keep in mind that these customizations affect the appearance of the Earth in the final animation. Thus, you cannot set the cloud's opacity to 100 for the first travel and change it to 0 for the next. When you're done with customizing the Earth look, you are ready to work on the script. The first thing you need to do is set the number of places you want to reach. In this example, I'm going to set 4. The number of places you set must coincide with the number of places you are going to use because the script doesn't accept empty fields. Now type the coordinates of your locations. The Earth coordinates can be expressed in three different formats degrees, minutes, seconds, degrees, decimal, minutes, and decimal degrees. This script only accepts the decimal degrees format. You're probably wondering how to find the right coordinates of your location. Well, you can find several websites that perform these conversions. For example, I suggest you to visit www.latlong.net. Here, you just have to type an address or a point of interest, and it immediately returns the correct coordinates. Okay, let's get back to my example. I want to arrive to the Colosseum in Rome, then go to London, move to New York, and finish my travel in Osaka, Japan. Let's start to copy and paste the latitude and longitude values of each destination. Now, let's move to these adjacent fields. We use them to set the duration of the travel from a place to another one. In my example, I'm going to leave the default duration, which is 6 seconds long. I will explain the map options later. Now, in order to complete the animation, you just need to press the Calculate button. I've just received a warning message which informs me that the footage in the Place 1 footage is missing. 
In fact, the script cannot create an animation if you don't place your footage in the corresponding composition. So I'm going to place my first footage into place one footage composition. Please pay attention that the duration of the composition matches with the duration of your clip. In other words, you can't leave blank spaces, like in this example. To adapt the duration of the composition to the duration of your video footage, you just need to click on the very useful Adapt button, which will automatically adapt the composition. And please note that if you're using an image, this button will not work. It is, in fact, impossible to adapt the duration of the composition to the duration of an image simply because an image has no duration. In this case, if you want to increase the duration of the composition, you have to do it manually. Let me show you how the trim button works. Now, let's imagine we place a video footage into a 10 second composition, like in this example, but we want to use only the first 5 seconds. We just need to move the time indicator to 5 seconds, then press the Trim button. In this case, the script cuts the footage and adapts the composition to 5 seconds. Now I can continue to place my footage in the remaining compositions, place 2 footage, place 3 footage, and place 4 footage, and set their durations to 5 seconds. OK, now I'm ready to click the Calculate button again. The script now reminds me to check if the footages fit the composition duration, and as I've already done this, I can press the Finalize button. Well done! OK, now I can open the final animation composition, and automatically my composition has been assembled and is now ready for the export. The Earth rotates, and it stops over Italy. The camera arrives in Rome showing my first footage. After 5 seconds, the camera zooms out and reaches the second location, London, and so on. At the end, the camera zooms out from Osaka and shows a logo that you can change in the Logo Here composition. This is optional, so if you don't want to show any logo at the end, simply remove the default logo from this composition. As you can see, the travel speed between New York and Osaka is quite high because the distance between these two points is very long. To solve this problem, you just need to change the animation duration on the corresponding duration text field. I'm going to try and set 10 seconds, then press the Calculate button again, and finally the Finalize button. If you want to add a marker pin and or the name of the location, you just have to open the Location Name folder, then open the corresponding composition, change the text, and enable only one marker style. As I mentioned before, the composition is now ready for the final render, but if you want, you can still add connections between these locations. So, open the Settings tab on the script and click on Enable Connections. Here you can change the lines type from solid to dotted, change the width, change the color, and decide whether to keep the lines always visible or shut them down when the camera arrives to a location.
The Load Data button retrieves the latest calculated information about the coordinates and their durations. For example, if you accidentally close the script, or you have to close After Effects, you can open the script again and press the Load Data button. The script will load the latest data information. Remember that the script saves this information only if you press the Calculate button. Before talking about the map, there is a final script function I'd like to explain, the Smart Rotation. Take a look at this animation. Everything works fine, but the travel from New York to Osaka is very long because it goes all the way across Europe. The shortest travel, in fact, would be overflying the Pacific Ocean. Smart Rotation is a powerful tool that calculates the shortest distance between your locations and therefore changes the direction of rotation of the world accordingly. The only limitation given by this function, when enabled, is that you can't use connection lines. Okay, it's time to talk about maps. As you know, Earth Navigator can automatically download the maps of your locations from Google Maps. The functioning is very easy. You just need to tick the map checkbox of the location and set the zoom level. If you want to have a reference of how the map appears according to the different zoom levels, you can change these option buttons to realize the value that you have to set for achieving the same zoom level. Now keep in mind that this map is only a reference and it doesn't change according to your coordinates values. Once you have chosen the zoom level you prefer, report this value to the corresponding text field. Before downloading the maps, you have to set the folder where all maps will be placed. By default, the maps are downloaded in a new folder created by the script on your desktop and called Earth Navigator Maps. But of course, you can change the location of this folder. Press this button and select your new path. In my animation, I want to use a map only in Rome, so I need to check the map checkbox for this location, press the Calculate button, then wait a few moments for the map to download. Now, if I check the content of Place 1 Footage Composition, I can see that the Colosseum map has been correctly imported and placed in the right composition. Currently, the map is static. You can animate it a little bit, for example, adding two keyframes on the scale at the start and at the end of the composition for a slight increase in size. A problem may arise when scaling the map. The footer text with the map attribution and the logo of Google gradually disappear when scaling. And this is not good because Google, like all maps providers, allows you to use their maps requiring not to obscure the logo and the map attribution. To get around this problem, you can enable the Google logo and attribution layers and copy the attribution of the download map in the attribution text layer. Now you can set the first keyframe of the scale to 170 and the last one to 200. Obviously, if you have an agreement with Google for using the map without their footer information, you can simply hide these layers. Whenever you click on the Calculate button with the map checkbox active, the script downloads and overwrites the previously imported map. For example, if you change the first coordinates, the ones previously leading to Rome, and you leave the checkbox active, when you press the Calculate button, the map of Rome will be overwritten by the new map. Now, if you have any issues during the map's download, please check the included Help Maps document into the Documentation folder. That's all, and thanks for watching.